Hey guys, we're at the New York premiere of Hitting Figures. We're on the red carpet. Make sure you check out our interviews. This is about inventing the math. Because without it, we're not going anywhere. Yes, sir. You've never been afraid to to do a sensitive story or talk about a sensitive topic. Talk about why you chose this script and why it was important for you to be a part of it. Well, I, I was surprised by it. I, I felt that it qualified as entertainment, but it also qua qualified as an honest look back at where we were. Um, we can we can be surprised, we can be embarrassed, we can even be a little bit ashamed of that and understand that there are people that participated in one of the great achievements in America and had a lot to do with it. We can also finish the movie, be thrilled with it, and then kind of look to put up a mirror in front of us as quickly as possible and see where we're at now. And that's a heavy place. Talk about bringing this amazing story to pen to paper and what was that process like and why you decided to do that? Well, um, the thing about it is I knew the, the women growing up. Uh, my dad, is a, he's a research scientist. He worked his whole career at NASA Langley, where the movie takes place. I grew up in Hampton, Virginia. Um, so uh, this was part of my childhood. It seemed totally normal that there were a lot of scientists, and a lot of them were black, and a lot of them were women. Very fortunate to grow up that way. Um, but it was really my husband, who's here tonight, who we were home almost exactly six years ago. Um, and Christmas, visiting my parents, and we ran into a woman who was a former Sunday school teacher who uh, happened to be a computer, a former computer. And my dad was just like, yeah, you know, Miss Land, she was a computer, XYZ was a computer, these other people are computers. And uh, yeah, Katherine Johnson, she calculated the launch window for the astronauts. You know, my husband was like, wait, wait, wait. You know, we're here in Hampton, Virginia, and you're telling me all these stories about this amazing thing that happened, and I have never heard of it, and why is that? And so for me, it was like, well, I know the women, but do I know the story? I didn't know the story. I didn't know, well, okay, I know Katherine Johnson and kind of what she did, but why was she there? Why were there black women at NASA? And who was there before her? And so she was the first one who told me about Dorothy Vaughn. And she said, Dorothy Vaughn was the smartest person I ever met. And I was like, well, if Katherine Johnston is saying that, I'm going to sit up and take notes. Right. And so it was really a one step at a time discovering the story until, you know, I was like, my God, this, this is one of the most amazing things. And it was right here in my backyard the whole time. It's amazing. And now tell me what was the film process like? Who contacted who and what's that process been like? Right, so what happened is uh, my agent, my uh, literary agent, a young woman named Mackenzie Brady Watson, um, she got my book proposal to a publisher, to HarperCollins, which agreed to publish it. And then um, she also got it into the hands of the movie people. The movie people. Right, all these people. And, and the movie people, people, all these fancy people. And um, the movie people meant very specifically uh, a woman named Donna Gelati, who I'm sure she's here and you'll talk to her tonight. Yeah, she's amazing and she's a genius, okay? And um, she picked up the phone and she said to me, we're gonna make a movie, right? I was like, okay, I, I haven't finished, but there is no book. You're calling me and we're gonna make a movie? I don't have a book, I, what, who, who are you, right? <laughs> And uh, but you know, I tell you what, um, that was two and a half years ago, I think, something like that. Everything that she has said. It's been a fast process. Very, very, lightning fast, unheard of. Everything that she has said has come true. We're standing here tonight at a movie, largely because she said we are doing this. You know, every project needs a champion. You know, I think that's one of the stories of this, this movie. Um, people championing other people. And she was a real champion for Hidden Figures. So, you know, I have to just say thanks to her. And she assembled more champions. You know, she got Allison Schroeder and Ted Melfi and Wynn Thomas, right, who did the, the production design. Uh, yeah, such Uncle that, Wynn, amazing, such that my mom, my parents saw the movie last week, and my mom was like, wait a minute, was that Katherine Johnson's house? She really, I mean, he really, he really, all the people, the people in Hampton, Virginia screened it last week, and the word that kept coming up was authenticity. How exciting is to see the project on the big screen? Amazing. I can't believe it happened. Right. This movie got made. What? What? Talk to me about putting together the, the screenplay, and like, what was that like? The process, I'm sure, like, putting together being in town, 
it was a lot going on. It was a lot. I mean, I, I grew up by NASA. I was a NASA baby. So my parent, my grandparents worked there. I worked there. So that helped understanding the world. But then I thought, how do I condense 40 years and this many amazing women into one film? So that was hard. But I think we did it. I think we hit on a good time period. Yeah, we did it. Okay. Yeah, we did it. How, tell me about the first time you heard the story of these women. What was that like? And what was like? It obviously affected you to make you compel to write a movie. But um, tell me about that first time you heard the story. I was like, of course, these great women were behind these great men. Duh. <laughs> no, I mean it made sense, right? The guys didn't want to do the mess, so the women stepped up and crunched the numbers. And I thought, we have to tell this story. We have to tell this story and change people's stereotypes and change people's mind and reclaim the history that we've lost. How long did it take you to put the story together and put the, after talking to everyone, and interviewing, how long was that process? Uh, my producer, Donna, was a taskmaster, so I had four weeks for research and 12 weeks for first drafts. Oh <laughs> so it was fast. Really fast. Really fast. We were we started out a much smaller movie, and then it gained more and more steam, so we're so lucky to be here, but it was a fast process. Tell me the first time you saw, like, were you, did you get to go to the set at all and see the build-out? So tell me what that first day it was like when you came to set and finally saw your baby come to life. It was like walking back in time and when the production designer was amazing and I walked into a amazing and I walk into a blank room and he's like tomorrow this will be the tracking room mission control and the next day there it was. And then when Taraji walks in to the tracking room, that's when I started crying. I was like, oh god, this is gonna be great, I hope. <laughs> yeah. Congratulations tonight. You did it. Thank Amazing. You. I can't wait. Everyone needs to go see this. I know. Please, everyone, go see this. Uh, I'm, well, I'm the production designer right. in the film. And uh, uh, the project came to me through, through um, Elizabeth Gabler at, at Fox. Uh, she was aware of my work from previous projects, and uh, I think it was her name that pushed me forward uh, towards the director and the producers of the film. So. So when you get approached for a project, how does it work? Do you read the script first, or like do you have the director tell you about the, the project first? Well, you, I, you, you know, it, it's helpful to read the to know what you're talking with when you go in for your first meeting with the director. So you right. always read the script, and usually uh, I come in with some uh, ideas, or I do a little bit of research before I see the director, and um, uh, you know, I, so I try and be as prepared as I can because I want the job and, and right. I particularly wanted the job on this film because it's such an important subject matter and uh, I was quite passionate about the script. Were so, you aware of these ladies' stories before you read the script? Absolutely not. I was shocked to, to know that there were women working at NASA. I was shocked to hear that there were black women working there as mathematicians. And you know, when you, you know, the great thing about this movie is that it's telling the story about a bunch of ordinary folks doing extraordinary things. Right. So it, it, uh, I, when I went in for the meeting, I really wanted the job, so I worked very hard to get it. So when you were doing your research on the project, the movie set in the 60s, what kind of things did you reference? What did you look at? Where did you go? Well, fortunately, there's a lot of research on the NASA website. So that there was easy to find research about NASA and the astronauts and some of the workspaces. Uh, it's more difficult when you're starting to uh, think about how each of these women lived. So, uh, uh, but this is an, an, a time period in films that I've designed a lot before. I did Malcolm X, for example, and a lot of that yeah. took place in the 60s. So I already was familiar with the, uh, the time period in terms of the 1960s. What I had to do was figure out what Hampton, Virginia was like in the 1960s. So that research was very specific. Did you visit Hampton, Virginia? Or did you no, I just did a lot through books, okay. through uh, some of it on the internet. And I'm, a, you know, I'm an old guy now, and I actually still go to the library. <laughs> so, you know, and the library was very helpful. There's a lot of there's stuff at the library. library. Scene in the film. No, yes, there's a lot of library stuff. The stuff that you can get at the library that you can't get on the internet. 